Hey everybody, David the AI Guide here. Welcome to the AI Guide where we focus on the human impact of AI. So, tremendous article, Wall Street Journal, hat tip to Christopher Mims, and here we go. He is proving what I've been telling you for a while. AI is about to be everywhere. Skeptics risk being left behind. Soon, most of us will use AI tools, even if indirectly, unless we want to risk falling further behind. We will face a growing number of communications generated with AI assistance, plans made with their input, and even products they helped inspire. AI will force people to change how they work, but not reducing the hours they spend at it. This means the gap between those using AI for productivity and everyone else threatens to widen into a chasm. For now, generative AI tools that can boost people's productivity require an early adopter's mindset because they don't work that great yet. But recently, the giants of the U.S. tech industry made it clear they have plans to bring the capabilities of generative AI deep into tools most of us use every day. And we've talked about Microsoft Copilot, which is not discussed here. In just the past two weeks, Microsoft announced deep integration of generative AI tools across Windows 11, meaning embedding it at the Windows level rather than the Office suite level like Copilot. Google rolled out changes to its BARD generative AI that will allow it to use all your documents, emails, and calendar items. Amazon showed off the next generation of generative AI capabilities for its Alexa smart assistant, and Meta announced it would make a chat-based assistant. Even Apple, which has yet to announce its own text-based generative AI but is developing one, last week rolled out a new accessibility feature for iPhones that uses a different form of generative AI to clone a user's voice. So in other words, <laughs> your chatbot on your iPhone is going to use your own voice. That's a trip. These are very much first-generation technologies full of frustrating limitations. But if the utility that early adopters already get out of them is any indication, adoption by the masses will soon follow. As more people use AI to help them generate written and visual communications more quickly, the volume of this content is likely to increase. Those who don't opt to use AI to help them summarize others' reports, respond to emails, or adapt to new business processes risk drowning in a fire hose of communications and increased complexity. You think your email isn't horrible already, just wait. Another way generative AI can make itself impossible to avoid by becoming the default interface for information retrieved from the internet and within big companies. My guess is that's definitely going to happen with search. One potential stumbling block to the use of AI in this way, it often makes up stuff. All of its work currently must be checked, but AI is still pretty good at taking care of a lot of rote tasks, meaning routine, normal tasks, and can save its users time by turning them into editors rather than content creators. And they're really talking about corporate work, not creative work here. Google has enabled BARD to search and summar summarize across everything in your Google account, yielding, in my own experience, some astonishing results. Becca Chambers, senior VP of the company that used to be called Corel, now Aludo, uses OpenAI's ChatGPT and Google's BARD. Recently, she says she used the two engines to plan an eight-day Hawaiian vacation, including helping her pick a hotel and coming up with itineraries for every day of the trip. This is the future, folks. And then they talk about an early adopter guy named Jackie Liang, who's a programmer. Recently, Liang had to prepare for job interviews. 
He used Claude and ChatGPT to help by having the bots pretend to be interviewers asking him questions. Liang even uses one chatbot, Pi, as a kind of counselor to help him process challenges in his life. So I did a segment on Pi. I've checked it out and used it. It's not really for me, but for personal counseling, it looks like it's taking off. The pace and simultaneity of all of these announcements from so many tech companies suggests that what's going on now is a manic land grab for our attention, money, and time. Not all of these tools will endure. AI feels like such an important tool that if you're not using it, you're missing out, says Chambers, the SVP of Corel. I think that's what AI is. Less effort, better results. So what does this all mean? This means that AI is going to integrate into our all day, every day lives. You gotta learn how to start using it. Click the link below, get the free resource. Everything in the resource is free. You will learn much more about AI than our short videos. Get that resource. And if you do get the resource, it will open up the opportunity for you to participate in my free beta course, the AI Safe Career Pivot which will help you change from a career likely to be automated to one that's relatively AI safe. So thanks so much for watching. Please subscribe, like, and share. We're at 958, very close to 1,000. Please subscribe, also like and share. Thanks for your positive comments on this channel. I really appreciate it. I'm doing this all for you to help you prepare for an AI-dominated future. Take care. See you next time. Bye.